sorry, I'm a bit arrogant. We have a top manager. Let me talk. I think I'm a special one. Time to go! Let me talk. Everywhere you go, there's meat pies. And I'm, I'm surprised that Americans haven't embraced this because this could be like the greatest thing on earth. You are now listening to the Meat Pie Podcast, your podcast for most things footy and few things pie. We have a groundbreaking interview for you today with Sam Zissette. Sam is the co-founder of Ballard FC, a brand new USL League 2 expansion team that's sets to feature in the upcoming 2022 season this summer. Uh, he founded the club along with co-founder and fellow Ballard Beaver, Chris Keimer, and former Seattle Sounders midfielder, Lamar Nagel. Sam, we're, we're very eager to hear more about Ballard FC, uh, but before we get into that, welcome to the pod. Um, how are you doing today? I can see that you're donning the beautiful Ballard FC home kit. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. Thanks for having me, Paul. Yeah, of course. Um, there are a couple connections that brought you to the podcast. Obviously, Ballard FC is like a very interesting up and coming club to talk about, USL League 2. But additionally, on top of that, uh, we are fellow Ballard natives connecting over this, both Sam and I and Chris, who's unable to, to join, unfortunately. We all went to Ballard High School and ended up playing soccer there as well. Um, so a little, bit of, a little bit of mutual connection on the pod, a little bit of Ballard representation here. Go Beavers. Completely. Um, so, so we are going to talk plenty about Ballard FC. Um, but before we get into that, I want to learn a little bit more about you. Uh, I know you're a Seattle native, and, and I understand you had a bit of a playing career yourself growing up in the area, moving up to a professional level. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your experience playing and, and kind of where it all started? Sure. Yeah, I grew up uh, in Seattle um, in the neighborhood of Wallingford, just uh, where Gasworks Park. Um, lived there my whole life, went to Ballard High School immediately you know my fell in love with soccer from the I don't know moment I can remember I was always kicking a ball around in my basement around my house and uh my dad coached my team up, up in you know all my rec years and just was in love with the game uh so yeah I mean played started playing for Emerald City a local youth club around here uh, eventually played for the Crossfire Academy and you know Ballard High School um and then went to play in college at the University of Puget Sound, a Division III uh, school down in Tacoma, Washington, where I pursued a degree and I got to continue playing and with the hopes of, you know, one day being a professional soccer player, which was always my dream. So um, I had an amazing career down at UPS, just loved every minute of it. Um, it was awesome to go and jump into a program where, you know, right in my first year, I could make a, an impact and have a you know, some immediate success and be part of a successful program. And so we won a conference championship my sophomore year. Um, just had an awesome experience there. I jumped onto the coaching staff right after I graduated while also in this, you know, pursuit of a professional playing career. So uh, as soon as I graduated, I actually in my senior year, I, I went to a, a S2, you know, what was S2 now is Tacoma Defiance open tryout. Um, just rolling dice, figured I might as well go to this open tryout. Why not? You know, I'm in the area. I'm still in school. Um, and I got called in one of like, I think two or three players that got called into preseason, which was like, never expected it, you know, was super excited about it. So I got to jump, jump into preseason there, did two, uh, three weeks, you know, played some fun games with, with S2, um, was released and, and not signed, but it kind of helped galvanize like my next steps of, a, of pursuing a career. So played a season with the Kitsap Pumas, uh, now no longer uh, P, what was PDL at the time team. And um, from there played for AFC Ann Arbor in Michigan, uh, an amazing club, now USL2 club, similar to Ballard FC. Um, had a great experience. From there, I went and signed a, a professional contract with a sixth division team down in south of Spain called CD Almanyecker City which was fun, played about a half season there, came back and uh, got on trial again with S2 
uh again no contract but had i actually played with them for about four months just training with the squad while i was kind of looking for my next steps yeah. so i would train with the squad in the morning walk dogs in the afternoon it was kind of living the life there for a while and then finally uh signed with uh, the tacoma stars to play some pro indoor soccer did two seasons with the stars had a great time but decided it was kind of time to make the next steps in my professional career outside of playing um so yeah that's a bit of my kind of a long-winded playing history but i mean the game has just been like soccer has been so important for me playing coaching it's uh you know but my, my whole career has been based off of soccer youth soccer and and um whatnot so yeah my whole life revolves around this game if i'm not playing i'm coaching if i'm not coaching i'm watching if i'm not watching i'm working on soccer so yeah, yeah i love it man it's my, it's my when you're life. not working when you're sleeping you're dreaming about it you can't <laughs> escape it anywhere um that that's really interesting it, it's cool to hear that that brought you you know overseas it, it it kind of galvanized this whole path that's carved you to where you are right now i mean that's amazing i do want to quickly ask so your playing career and then you transitioned to like a coaching administrative role right what was that like for you um, did that integrate any of your education as well? And, and how did you find that different than playing, like viewing the game from a different side? Yeah, I think when I was in college, I knew like the level I was playing at was never, you know, I was, I had dreams of like, you know, whatever, being an MLS level player, but I kind of had that understanding of like where I was at and some self-awareness mm -hmm. that like, I better prepare for a career like pretty quick. And even if I can dream about this professional playing career, it's like, I got to be ready for my career. It could be in a month, it could be in, you know, a year or whatever, like I got to get ready to go. So my passion was always coaching actually. And so I pursued an exercise science degree, started working on my coaching licenses. I just like teaching the game. I, I had my first coaching experience actually in high school where I helped my dad kept coaching rec soccer and I went and helped him coach. And I, uh, I think he paid me, it was like a camp and he paid me like 50 bucks or something for like a, you know, whatever, <laughs> three or four hour camp day. And I was like, I had so much fun and I was like, like being able to teach kids the game, but like really teach kids life lessons through the game, like mm -hmm. about confidence and how to be a leader, how to be a part of a team. Like I felt so much like so, so rewarded by being able to do that. And then at the end of the day, it was like, wait, I made money doing this too. Like I got the actual satisfaction of being able to teach kids and there can be a career off this. Like it was like a light bulb kind of went off my head and was like, yeah. this is what I want to do with my life. I just want to teach this game and teach kids uh, soccer. Right. So I, I was what my whole like education was based off of and, and where I wanted to go. And I was on that, like, even while after I graduated from college was like pursuing full-time coaching along with my professional playing career and like, you know, pursuing degrees or uh, coaching licenses and badges and, um had all plans like for forever to be a, a coach and try to work my way you know through that that career um I got I was I was coaching camps for the Sounders doing Sounders camps you know as a camp director in the summers and it turned into a, a front office job running like helping run the kind of back-ended admin you know pieces and marketing mm -hmm. camps and I uh I that's kind of where like a different light bulb went off my brain where I was like oh I actually really enjoy also like kind of the business side of things. It's never what I, what I expected I would want to do, but um, yeah. So I kind of got into that and now I'm just, I still coach down at UPS as an assistant. So it's my way of like being on the field, being able to continue teaching it. But uh, my career for the last few years has been more on like the business and administrative side of the game, so. Totally. It's so interesting growing up playing how you've always viewed the game from this one perspective. And then as you grow older, you realize like, it wasn't until I was like 20 where I really thought of soccer also as a business in a lot of ways. And so it, it's interesting how you get exposed to these new perspectives as you grow and kind of evolve through being a player. You learn about these other things, you start coaching a little bit, you learn about the multiple perspectives that go into making the game what it is. Um, I'm sure along the way, you also must have had some great coaches to push you as well. I mean, that's one of the things that made me fall in love with various sports, whether it be soccer, whether it be basketball, you know, having good coaches to, to push you. And then it makes you want to be that kind of coach, you know? Absolutely. Now I had, I was lucky. I had some really incredible coaches 
um, starting with my dad, who I've already given two shout outs to. Yeah. Now three. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so he was a great coach. I had some great coaches, Emerald City Crossfire. Um, my college coach was a huge mentor of mine, Reese. And, um, you know, Darren Sawatsky, who's now the coach of uh, Richmond Kickers in the USL League One. He was my coach for uh, ODP back, you know, when that existed. And um, then he coached me at the Sounders U23s and at the Tacoma Stars. So it was cool to have a coach who was a big part of my youth career, then be a part of you know, helping me, you know, forge this professional, you know, somewhat of a professional playing career and like being able to bring that full circle. So coaches are mentors and teachers. And um, that was a huge inspiration for me, for sure, to have people where, like, I felt a lot about what I learned about myself and how to be uh, just like a good person and a good friend and a good, you know, I mean, just a good part of society is like, I learned that through soccer. You know, you got to learn to not just be, you know, we, we talk about being a leader, but it's being a follower, right? When you're on a new team and you've got to like listen to your teammates and your captains and your coaches and understand how to like take feedback. Like th those are huge, important life lessons that, you know, you learn those things in, in classes and in just in your life. But in soccer, I just feel like there's so many ways to, to learn about like how to be a good person and how to, you know, contribute to this, you know, community um, and learn those things through the game. And so I had coaches that, did that for me so so well. I'm so appreciative of that. I'm still connected to all my old coaches, which is great. Yeah, that's really great. I mean, I I completely agree with you. It's also it's not only learning those lessons. Soccer gives you a medium to apply them, and that's that's where the that's where the character development really happens. Um, and coaches do a huge job in making that difference in a lot of ways. So so I, I appreciate you you shouting out those coaches. Your dad's going to be thrilled with this, by the way. He didn't, he didn't know he was going to get brought up. He has no idea. Time. I won't, I won't, I can't tell him or else he'll just no. hang that over me. You know, I have to yeah. just be quiet. You got hey, just, just start the podcast for 15 minutes, dad. The, the first 15 <laughs> minutes doesn't really matter. You don't need to listen to it. Right. Um, I, I do want to get into Ballard FC. Um, for, for anyone that doesn't know, this Ballard FC is a new USL League 2 expansion team kind of housed in Ballard. They play in Inner Bay, this field, this nice field in Seattle used, used to play a lot of games at. Um, first of all, congratulations on the whole venture. It must be surreal to be the founder of something like this. And, and it's just amazing that it's, that it's getting up off the ground. Um, I, I'd love to hear a little bit about what Ballard FC is, where the inspiration came from, um, and, and kind of the journey that it took to get where it is today, you know, on the brink of starting a new season in this summer. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, where to begin. I'm so, so Ballard FC, well, like I, I was originally inspired by like this community level soccer when I, when I went out to play for AFC Ann Arbor, like I mentioned earlier, um, mm -hmm. you know, a Ann Arbor is a, is a cool town, uh, you know, huge, you know, university of Michigan, just college town. Everything you see is, is the university of Michigan stuff, football and, and, you know, everything else there. So, they carved out this amazing community level club because there's still a pride in the city of Ann Arbor, not just university of Michigan. So they would draw around a thousand people, a game families, you know, young professionals, like everybody could come who, who just wanted to celebrate soccer and their pride of Ann Arbor. And I kind of like I clicked for me. It was like, well, if this could work here in Michigan and like they, the way they treated players and fans was like so professionally. And if this works here, like what, could this work in my community, you know, Ballard? Mm -hmm. um, it's different with Ballard being a neighborhood within a city. It's a whole different kind of, you know, culture. But then like, you know, playing for a few other clubs in between, I had some time to kind of like look at this club in Spain and how things were going there and come back home and play for the Tacoma Stars and um, just drawing inspiration from all these different clubs I was playing for and getting to play against as well. And we would travel to teams and like all that while this idea was kind of kicking around in my head of like taking this global game down to the grassroots level to our community where you almost always just see clubs represent cities or towns. And why couldn't we take a club and, and have it represent our neighborhood, right? Ballard is a huge, you know, it's, it's huge in population, but it has a huge tradition in history that dates back over a hundred years when Ballard was its own city and mm -hmm. it was annexed into Seattle and there's a whole, and Chris, who unfortunately could make, he could tell you way more about the history than <laughs> I could. He's a history buff, but like, there's so much that um, it just felt right when we would talk about it and 
just dream about this idea. And, and honestly, I never really thought it would happen anytime soon. I thought this was this kind of pipe dream, long-term thing, maybe in 20 years, I'll see if we can make it happen. But it really got galvanized when, when COVID hit and uh, I was laid off from my job at the Sounders. Um, and, you know, I had a lot more time on my hands to kind of dive into this a bit more, but it kind of brought back the idea that like, when we come out of this, there's going to be this like, need and and uh desire for like community building again right like we lost so much opportunity to build community and build relationships and get together with folks and so when we get out of this like we're gonna need those opportunities and so it just felt like we needed to make ballard fc happen sooner rather than later and so i called lamar who we we became friends uh at the tacoma stars um playing together and uh just really respect his whole like we just had great conversations when we were teammates together and felt like, you know, he's just the right person to call. And so called him just kind of thinking might as well pitch it to him, see what he thinks. And he was just on it. Like, yes, this is great. I'm in. So that like really helped to galvanize things. Yeah. So like, okay. Lamar wants to do this now. Shit. We got to make it happen. Um, so we started working on it, got with the league, got with the city to work on the facility and just kind of like, it was a domino effect from there. And then the final step of like really galvanizing the project was when we were introduced to Chris um, and it was like an instant fit again, Chris with a, uh, you know, tremendous, you know, resume for, with and an experience with working with soccer and social impact and running his own nonprofit organizations within that kind of industry. So when the three of us finally all merged together as three co-founders, that's when things really kicked off and just been moving along ever since and it's been fun exciting and a wild roller coaster but uh yeah first season coming up in may and it's gonna be fun yeah that's amazing i mean i can speak personally to that need for community building especially in ballard my parents during covid uh they have like a pretty tight-knit friend group on their block you know it happens all over the place but you have these block parties right like once a year where everyone comes out of their house and they'll gather on the street and um my parents living in Ballard they kind of felt disconnected from all of that and so through COVID they all everyone would kind of come together as like a weekly like socially distanced gathering and it's become like a, a total tradition for them and so that need for community is so deep in in Ballard it is such a logical next step to apply that to soccer which also runs so deep in Ballard um it, it, it's everywhere. I think that is such a beautiful pairing and, and being someone from there, I got to say, I'm so excited to, to kick off the season and just, and just see how it goes and learn more about it. Yeah, man. Uh, you're, I think you're, I mean, there is this like rich history of soccer where um, in Ballard, where, I mean, you could even look at like, you know, a weird metric, but like soccer specific bars, you know, like yeah. half <laughs> the soccer specific bars in Seattle are in Ballard, you know, and like, with the brewery culture as well. Like we knew that that, like that's such, such a natural fit, like craft mm -hmm. beer and like grassroots soccer is just like, is oh, like, you know, beautiful. peanut butter and jelly. It's just like, because, and it's because the culture, like it's the same type of culture. And like what we want to evoke, like the feeling of being at a ballot FC game is kind of the same feeling of being in a brewery on a Saturday afternoon where there's families, there's older folks, there's younger folks, there's like dogs or, well, we can't have dogs in our stadium, but like the energy of just like anybody, everybody's here and we're all having a good time. And we're just like celebrating this like community and just like meeting new people. And, you know, like that's just kind of the same kind of energy we want to have at games. And, you know, Ballard has this amazing brewery district, right? Like I think now it's 12 breweries or 11 breweries in a, like a couple I don't even know what a square mile or so, which is, I think mm -hmm. maybe the most breweries per capita in the world. And <laughs> I need Chris here to like fact check me on these things. Cause he's, he's got it, but it's like that culture felt right. You know, like matching that up. And um, so between like the, the history of soccer in the city, but in like Ballard specifically, and then like tying that with, you know, just like some of the things that make Ballard a special place and like real, like cultural, I don't know, like, People ask often, like, would this work in other neighborhoods in Seattle or in the country? And I definitely couldn't speak to other neighborhoods and other cities because you have to, like, live in a place to know its neighborhoods and its communities. And I haven't lived in any other places for long enough to really know those kind of things. But 
I, I think this could work in other neighborhoods, but I know like it's, and I knew it's like, this can work in Ballard because people, it might not be spoken, but like, there's this unspoken feeling that like Ballard is Ballard, you know, it's like, it's yeah. own place. and like, we don't talk about it, but we all kind of like feel it. I don't know if you agree, but that's at least no, yeah, we, we won't tell everyone about the underground meetings that we have <laughs> that, that can remain secret. Um, but I, I totally agree with you, man. There's this, there's just a, a feeling of inclusivity that you get with soccer in general, but then additionally, like the culture in Ballard, especially with like brewery culture, um, like just the whole community feels very inclusive. And I, I, I think it's astute of you to point out that those go hand in hand very well. Um, and, and you kind of, you kind of walked right into another question that I had for you, which is that being, you know, having experience in Ballard, living in Seattle, I, I can tell that the community will like be fully behind this club and this venture. And as you said, you knew it would work very well here. Um, we talked a little bit about the inclusivity in the community. I think it'd be interesting to hear like, besides maybe the, the aspect of like having a tight knit community, do you think there are other factors that make Ballard like really well positioned to house a team because there are there are teams like scattered around the country like you would know better than me how many USL League two teams there are but it's not a common thing to have in like every single city or or two in a single city or, or specific to neighborhoods it, it it kind of has to be fueled by something like in that place um so, so I'd wonder what, from your perspective, are there any other factors or features that make Ballard like really well positioned and, and at least right now in a really good place to like take on this team? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, I think like what I was saying earlier, just about like Ballard being such a special place is what makes it, you know, I think like we could have done exactly the same thing. And this is all, you know, just like hypothetical, but like, you know, we could have done everything we did the same, but called the team North Seattle FC. And I really don't think it would have worked because I think it's about mm -hmm. like identity, like how people like associate a place with a feeling. Um, and so that's not just for folks who live in the, in the neighborhood. Like we have a lot of people who, you know, are loving Ballot FC who live in other neighborhoods or live in other cities and maybe they just visited or they have a friend who lived in Ballard or like they grew up in Ballard and then moved away. So I think it's like, it's not just for folks who live in the neighborhood who support it, but like when there's a place that you can identify with because it has like a special meaning for you, um, I think that like sport is a great way to celebrate that, right? I mean, you can celebrate that that love of a place through whatever, buying a piece of merch or, you know, like going to a concert or a restaurant in the neighborhood, but like sport is a way for us to like cheer that on and root that, you know, and like, so soccer and Ballard FC is really just like a medium for folks who identify with Ballard as a special place to them to celebrate that, right? It's, it's just, that's all Ballard FC is, is. It's that kind of like medium to celebrate that pride. Um, mm -hmm. And Ballard has a ton of pride of place, you know, uh, like people just love this neighborhood. And I, I don't know why. I mean, I know why I do. Everyone has a different reason though, right? So, um, but I think that's why it works. I think it's just like, we all feel this sort of special pride in this place. And maybe it also it has to do with the people. Like there are great people who live in Ballard. They're great people all over the world, but like, you know, they're, they're just like really kind, generous, yeah, community oriented folks in Ballard. And that makes us want to like celebrate that kind of like coming together of, of all those people, I guess. Mm -hmm, totally. I mean, I mean, those are some beautiful reasons to just live somewhere, but then, combining that I think you said it very well with the medium of sport it gives people something they can identify with and you know I'm not going to this I mean there are places you go and and you like them for what they are but when you can really identify someone like something like I feel like I'm a part of this community and this club I think that's an amazing thing I actually told my parents about this interview I was saying you know I'm interviewing this guy Sam he's the founder of of Ballard FC. Have you guys heard of it? Do you know what it is? And they like cut me off. They're like, of course we know what it is. Like we've heard so much about it. Like that's going to be so cool. And so I, I, I had no idea they knew anything about it. They're not on like Twitter or anything. They don't, they don't know <laughs> what's going on, but, um, 
they're that's crazy they're certainly yeah no Sorry, is, i didn't mean it but that is crazy because i guess i should I, I at one point a little bit ago i said something about like we knew this would work we didn't really like we knew it would work like for our friends and for our family sure. and like maybe honestly we were like if we could get 300 people to like most of them our friends and our family to like be down for this and like come out to games in our first year maybe that 300 in a year you know they tell some friends and in a couple years we're at 400 500 people a game and like it starts to feel like something but we really were shocked and surprised at like not not just how many people we were able to reach but how many people like understood what we were trying to do and and bought into the the vision that was mm -hmm. shocking and like in a great way and it's been kind of a whirlwind just like continuing you know to try to like keep up with that and and um and get through but it's been an amazing journey so i'm just saying i i want to say like that's so crazy like to hear your parents say like oh of course we that's wild i never would have thought if you asked me two months ago like would that be the case i would have been like no no way i would have had to knock yeah. on the door and pitch them <laughs> on it right but so it's been a it's been i mean a I, I never would have thought like I, like it's 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 just so cool i'm sure that they're like an example of of what of how information spreads in like that community where they can tell this is so important because they're a part of that community right and and it's just it shows how much that feeling permeates in ballard but also soccer specifically permeates in ballard um which is really interesting um i i want to ask you something a little separate from the community aspect and more about like operationally um, I'm very interested into what goes into being an owner of a club. I'm sure there's an insurmountable amount of things that you need to get done to get the season up and running. Um, I'm wondering, like, from your perspective and, and your co-founder's perspective, well, what does, like, the day-to-day -day life of a football club owner look like, and how, do, how does that differ as you move closer to the season? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think I would want to preface it first, though, by saying that like every club in this country, like every USL 2 club and, and other leagues are all going to be operating on a different pathway, yeah. right? Because the nature of this is like you can only do what you what you can do. And so like folks are going to be running clubs completely differently based on their circumstances, right? There are some clubs that are relying on 100 volunteers all doing a little thing, or there's some clubs where it's all in house with two people doing everything. And it just kind of is case by case. So like what, what we're doing and, and what's working for us or not working for us is definitely going to be different from club to club. But um, I mean, really like it's the three of us kind of taking on the brunt of the work, but now we've brought on a head coach, Jason Farrell, who's kind of running all things like sporting. So building a roster will be mm -hmm. obviously coaching the team. Um, you know, kind of building out that whole sporting side of the club. So it's nice to have somebody, you know, who's like taking care in charge of like the soccer specific, specific stuff. And, um, you know, with Lamar having obviously so much experience playing and, and coaching experience, you know, he can assist and be a big part of that sporting piece as well. So like, you know, that there's that piece. And then there's just, there are a ton of little things, especially in our first year that are brand new. So that's where the bulk of the work is, is like, Every system we're setting up, every vendor we're working with, every process and protocol is brand new for this year, which is making like we're front loading a lot of this work. And, um, you know, Chris and I are more on like the operations side and, and Chris more specifically, like with his experience in the startup world, you know, running nonprofits like on like there's a lot of those, you know, legal pieces and uh you know, working with sponsors. And so he's kind of, he, he, with his experience there, he runs a lot of that kind of like more logistical stuff, operational stuff. And then for me, it's more of like the marketing, um, you know, like admin business development kind of pieces. So we're all just kind of sharing the love and doing, doing different jobs and learning new things every week and every day. And, um, you know, it's, it's a challenge, but it's nice to be able to continue to bring people into the fold and build this team up, you know, over time. And, um so yeah i mean it's a challenge it's tough we're, we're not experts like we're learning so much we're making mistakes and then trying to improve on those but like from a, from an operation standpoint from the club it's really the three of us bearing the brunt of the work and then lamar doing some sporting stuff with jason and then me and chris kind of 
you know, covering more of like the operations piece and like trying to keep this thing ticking. So, yeah. Totally. I mean, it must have been so nice to get Jason on board because then you can just be like, okay, we're going to have a team. We're going to have players and we're going to have a team fielded. Um, I think it would be so interesting to like look at recruiting players and, and getting people on the roster because um, I can only imagine there, there would be some competition for those spots. Yeah, I think so. I mean, our, our roster will be interesting. Um, it's really fun. It's a really fun part about this is like giving mm -hmm. opportunity to players and there's a competitive side of all of us that like, you know, we talk about building community all the time. We talk about like Ballard and, but there's also an important like winning, winning is important, right? You, everybody mm -hmm. wants to support a winning club and we want to be, you know, owners of this club that is successful. So building a roster and having a successful team is, is crucial. So it's fun to be kind of, you know, a fly on the wall during those meetings and help out and support where I can. But, um, so yeah, it'll be competitive. We'll have open tryouts coming up in, in early March that we'll be announcing next week. So it'll be fun for like folks in the community who have continued play and they, they have this dream of playing for, you know, a semi-professional level club, but that treats it very professionally. Like, uh, well, they'll have an opportunity to come try out. Um, but a lot of our roster will be current college players. It's kind of the nature mm -hmm. of USL league two to be this like, pre-professional development pathway for players who are in college to, you know, finish up their spring season with college, their spring semester, jump on a team like ours and, and represent Ballard FC for the summer, give it their all, and then go back into their fall college seasons, you know, fit and focused. If you look at, you know, USL League Two over time, like so many players who come out of the draft or like players like Jordan Morris, DeAndre Yedlin, and, and whoever, like, played for USL two clubs and it was a big piece of their development because mm. you shut off from, you know, May through July, you know, three months out of the year and then go back into your college season, you know, that's 25% of your year's worth of development that can either be utilized playing for a club like ours, or, you know, it can slow or halt to your development. So we see ourselves as a big like pre-professional club for players like that. But we also want to anchor our roster with, you know, a good core group of veteran players, some, mid to upper 20s early 30s players who can still hack it and can be that kind of like veteran presence on the club and uh you know it's good for those younger players to have some older players to look to so yeah that's where we're at right now is like finding those players who are the right fit having those conversations but also saving spots for open trialists who are you know show up and are look like they're a good fit so um yeah we'll have a roster of 30 players and we're gonna you know compete and we're gonna try to win games and our goal is to win the division and then be a, a U.S. Open Cup participating team in the 2023 U.S. Open Cup, because that's the dream is to make it as far as we can in that tournament, you know, win the USL League Two playoffs. So, yeah, working hard on building a good roster. And Jason is the right guy. He's got great connections, a great vision. for mm -hmm. this. So it's been fun. Yeah, he seems like a really experienced guy to be leading that charge. Um, you make a really good pitch, honestly, for players wanting to join during the summer. like. I like, you know, they want to play, they want to be playing and it adds so much value to their development. Um, that that's a super, like you mentioned some, some pretty successful players just there who have come up through USL league two and use that as a stepping stone for their professional careers. Um, I think it's also really cool that you can integrate into a larger roster and, you know, these players can remain eligible for their, for their college seasons and stuff. I think, in that way, it's really well integrated with how these players want to develop on, on the whole. Um, also, Seattle and Ballard is kind of a talent hotbed in a lot of ways, especially with college players, like shooting out to schools and maybe going back to Seattle for the summer or especially playing UW. Um, there are so many opportunities for those guys to, to get a shot at, at a really cool opportunity here. Yeah, absolutely. There's like you said it, you know, there are so many players who are from Seattle and are either playing for a local, um, you know, Seattle U, UW, SPU, UPS, <laughs> PLU, um, <laughs> or I had to give a shout out or, um, you know, guys who go and play for different colleges, you know, in other, in other States and are coming home for the summer. There's dozens and dozens of great, really good players. Um, so, you know, what's cool for us is like in this first year, 
we're going to build a roster of entirely local players, which is different than almost all USL two clubs. Most clubs will provide, you know, get a housing set up with apartments and houses and bring in like for me, when I went to Michigan uh, and played for that club, you know, I was one of maybe 15 players, you know, coming from out of state to play for the team. And that's amazing to build this community of players coming from all over the place. And it's like, and that's maybe one day what we're going to do, but we just feel like there's so much good quality, so many good quality players here that we should try to provide as many opportunities for local Seattle players as possible. Um, so I expect to see you at our tryouts in uh, early March, getting those yeah. <laughs> back out. You got to put, put some band-aids on those blisters, get out there. <laughs> um, that's so cool, man. I mean, having that local, I mean, it must ease some of the burden for you as well, sourcing local players. Um, that also kind of spreads word of mouth around the place. I mean, I think that's kind of in the DNA of what Ballard FC is is striving for. I think that's a really unique twist um, on how you're putting putting that team together. Um, I, I want to quickly ask, uh, it must be very hard to, to put something like this together. I'm sure so much work goes into it. Like I said, what has been really difficult for you in this process, whether it be getting initial like buy on uh, kind of, I don't know, like outreach and, or has it been working with getting a coach or getting players or in your mind, what has been something that's been really difficult about starting a club? Maybe a reason some don't get off the ground. Yeah. I mean, I would say more broadly speaking, the difficult piece would just be how many, how many new things there are to learn and do. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, that's, that's been the biggest challenge is the juggling, the juggling act of, you know, okay, we've got, you know, we've got to get our marketing, you know, platform set up and, and going correctly. We've got merchandise, we've got to pack and ship out and continue designs on and order new inventories and sponsors. We got to, you know, fill out our sponsorship spots and, and pitch different businesses and have those meetings. Like there are dozens of, just like little things we're constantly juggling and trying to keep, you know, above water. And like, that is the biggest challenge for sure, especially with a small operation where it's not like we've assigned one person to each of these things to own it, you know, like so-and-so yeah. owns this and that, like, we're all like, we're just kind of juggling all these different pieces. And that's like the overarching challenge of all of this is um, just have the volume of work and it's split amongst so many different things that, that are all unique and require you know, learning new, you know, new systems and new tools. So that's the overarching challenge. I think um, like more specifically, some things that are, that are difficult is, you know, balancing also all of this with, with life, you know, like, oh yeah, um, <laughs> my, my fiance and our house and our dog. And then my job that I, you know, and like just there's things that you have to balance. It's difficult, you know, like working on our facility is challenging as well. Um, you know, Seattle Parks is a great partner that we're excited to be like working with. And Inner Bay is a beautiful facility. Oh, yeah. um, but it's certainly a challenge to like lock in these dates and we're going to have to start working on securing permits. And, you know, there are definitely a lot of like, you know, time consuming tasks that go towards like getting this facility locked in and then like game day operations in itself, like how many folks we're going to need to to have out there to scan tickets and sell merchandise and help people to their seats and security and food and a beer garden. And, you know, there's just kind of layers and layers of, of uh, different tasks there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's any one big thing. That's a challenge. I think it's bringing it all together. That's the biggest challenge. And, you know, what might prevent somebody else from starting a club? I mean, there's obviously like a financial piece. It takes a bit of investment to like make this, you know, get this thing off the ground, but it doesn't take mm -hmm. too much because if you get things going quick enough, you know, and you can start selling tickets and jerseys, it'll pay for itself. It's not a glorious business. You know, no one gets into this to, you know, like make, make money off of it. Yeah. It's, not it's, about. it's like, it's, you're not, it's not going to happen. Um, maybe it is, but it's not going to happen in the same way. Like other businesses, you can make that happen. So right. it's sort of, it's about the passion and the, you know, the community. So, um, I, you know, all in all rambling here a bit, but the challenge is juggling all these different things for sure. No, I love, I love hearing about it. It's really interesting. Um, I also kind of a side note, my, 
my day job is like starting like a software startup. So I'm well aware with the amount of like new stuff that comes up and like juggling all of these different tasks. And then I think something that you mentioned that I really like resonated with is you don't have people assigned and like own specific stuff. And then on top of that, like things pop up that nobody thought of and you're like, yeah. okay, well, this is something brand new to all of us that we didn't even know we we're going to have to deal with. And then putting all those pieces together in a successful way um, is hard, but it's certainly a rewarding challenge in a lot of ways. Definitely. I think, yeah, I mean, that's spot on. It is like, it's hard, but it's rewarding. And, you know, there's like, what we want to avoid is like, you know, like the analogy I think of is like a dam breaking and there's all these different gaps you got to fill. Like we're trying to get ahead of it. And like the work we did leading up to December 1st when we launched was all about like building a strong foundation. So yeah. like, we wanted to be as prepared as possible to like and build this foundation that like no matter what little challenges might come up like we've got something we can fall back on which is this foundation that we've built over time so we took time to like figure out what our vision is what our mission is and then also just you know what like how we're going to manage these different operational tasks wrapping our head around little things like you know our website cuz if if that falls apart or breaks down or you get something wrong, it can make, it can have serious consequences. So like a lot of the time we spent was in like the, the pre launch, just making sure our foundation is built out like strongly so that any little challenge, we're not trying to patch up and make sure things stay afloat. So, I mean, that's, you know, it all sounds good right now. Obviously there's going to be more, <laughs> and more challenges when actual games roll around, like when we actually have to have, you know, put butts in seats, like yeah. that's going to be fun. It's exciting. But that's again, kind of what we're doing now is like, we're not going to start preparing for games in, in April and then just like hope things work out. You know, we're working on every day. We're working hard now up until May to make sure that when that first game happens, we're as prepared as possible. You know, you can't be prepared for everything. Stuff's going to go wrong and that's okay. But like, we've got plan B's and C's and like we're prepared as possible so that people have a good time. Cause that's what it's all about in the end. Right. We want to deliver on these expectations that it's going to be a great community event to celebrate soccer, to celebrate Ballard. We want to deliver on that. We don't want people to show up and for the PA system to be broken and the, the scoreboard not to be working and the lights to turn. Yeah. Like it's gotta be good. It's gotta feel good and, and be the right atmosphere where people leave and go, damn, that was fun. That was, you know, what a great experience you know, and talk about it and bring their friends. And so we're working hard. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure you are. I mean, it sounds like you have a really solid plan going forward. Um, my next question was going to be, but you've kind of already answered it. It was going to be, what are your aspirations for this first season? Um, like, what are you most excited about? What are you, like, where do you see or where do you want to see yourself in eight months? That's a good question. I feel like um, I'm trying to figure that out every day. <laughs> like what, yeah. what are we striving towards? I feel like it's more of like a feeling than it is a specific metric. I feel like oftentimes in business, like you want to look at like success is based off a metric. Like we hit a certain number of tickets or whatever, but it's more of a feeling for me that like, I want to feel that in August when our season wraps up, like, okay, we did a good job. Like we can be proud yeah. of what we did. And there are reasons like it's feedback. It's people saying Ballard FC was really special to me. That's players saying, thank you. Like this was a great experience for me as a player. It's our fans and, you know, being able to see kids out on, on the field after the game, getting autographs from players and smiling and like saying, you know, parents or whatever saying like, thank you. This was a great experience. And I feel like all those little things contribute to an overall feeling of success that isn't really measurable. Um, mm -hmm. Like that's kind of what I look to is like, yeah, I want to be able to have a conversation with our co-founders in August and us look at each other and go, yeah, that was good. Good stuff, guys. You know, like it's a weird thing to like want to strive towards, but like that's really what we're kind of seeking is that that feeling. No, I totally see where it's coming from. I mean, especially if you think about like the context of our conversation today, like how much of the important things go into building this aren't metrics. You know, how much of important things to soccer in general, like I think compared to other sports, Soccer is a game that is less based on metrics inherently. And so having those things come together, the success doesn't have to look like a metric or tickets old or seats filled. Like games one, obviously you want all that and you're striving towards that. But 
I think it's really, really special that you have this idea that that is not the only metric of what we want this to become. And that's not the only reason it's being built. And I personally think that is a very successful mindset. So, so good on you. Appreciate it. Um, kind of my last question, it's going to take us probably a couple of minutes. I do want to end off on talking about the kit that you're wearing. Um, <laughs> I've, I've seen some stuff online. You guys smashed your kit launch. I'm personally a, a big fan of the home kit that you're wearing. The away shirt is also super special. Um, I, I want to ask you what goes into designing those and something you guys did something really special where you let the fans vote on what the away shirt was going to be. Um, what was the thought process behind that and, and just building the kits, get, getting Rubens on board to be the sponsor? Yeah, a lot of good questions in one question. <laughs> Go see if I can answer them all. First of all, with Rubens, just because it was the last question, uh, they are an incredible partner. We approached Rubens, kind of what I talked about at the top of this interview is about like the brewery culture. And it, it just clicked mm -hmm. for us that like, you know, we should tap into that with our sponsorship group. Um, and Rubens is our favorite brewery. Um, like, and I'm not just saying that it truly is like, it's a great place and we love it and love their beer and love the culture and environment there. So, um, and Adam, the, the one of the Adam and Grace both own Grace and Adam are, are married and they've owned Rubens now for 10 years. It's their 10 year anniversary of the, of the brewery. And, um, you know, Adam's from London was a big Tottenham supporter tragically for him hopefully he doesn't hear this but um and uh so like I kind of felt like already like there could be a good fit here and so we took it to them in like February or March of uh 2021 and they Adam and, and the whole team there were just like yes can we support this let's talk about it and so that's um, amazing it's a great partnership um and we're just we're super excited about it and going forward what it's going to mean and like we had our launch party there at the tap room, which is incredible. You know, we'll have a ton of other great events like our, our season ticket holder kickoff event. We'll do, you know, away, away game streaming there. We'll do pregame home game stuff there and, you know, be able to stream the home games for folks who, you know, can't make it into the stadium for various reasons, but it's an awesome like place right in the heart of Ballard that we can kind of has our, have, as, excuse me, have as our clubhouse. Uh, mm -hmm, in that totally. way. So, uh, so the jerseys though, uh this has been one of the more fun pieces of i mean there's a lot of fun things to do but designing jerseys well with anaria our kit partner getting to kind of pitch ideas back and forth and see mock-ups and make changes is it's one of the more fun sometimes stressful but fun pieces of this uh because i think we're all like somewhat creative people and like to kind of like see what happens when you take an idea and splash it onto a jersey um so like and jerseys are fun too because they're a way to you know, they're a way to just like take Ballard FC and like represent it, you know, physically mm -hmm. and manifest that like pride in something. So um, the home jersey is, is like this wave pattern that we love, sort of supposed to be inspired by Golden Gardens, like a summer at Golden yeah. Gardens, which, which you know, but for the folks who don't, Golden Gardens is the park uh, beach on the west side of Ballard, just along the water. And it's like in the summer sun setting on golden gardens is like just like peak just you like, can't beat it you cannot it. beat it so we wanted to have like kind of a summery sunset feel a uh, wave pattern to like represent that piece of golden Gardens. so that was how we went with this kit there's some kind of fun different pieces to it that we got to explore on and then yeah the away jersey putting it to a vote was like always the plan we, we and we're going to do things like that always is like integrate the supporters and the fans and like followers of people of ballard fc to like have a say in the club and not just on like material things like what jersey we're going to wear but like important decisions about the club and like where we go and let people like be part of it that way um and not just be like a passive consumer of ballard fc but be like actively part of this family to like make decisions together and build the club from the ground up right so we, we've got four different jersey designs all very different with a different story and a different kind of feel to them and wanted to see what people thought and of course everybody picked like the most bold like yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> out there jersey so and i i don't know i kind of that was the one i was silently rooting for but it's also the most risky because what it looks like in 2d is not necessarily what it's gonna 
look like in 3D. So hopefully, I mean, I have a good feeling that they're going to come together really nicely and people are going to love them. So, but yeah, the Jersey piece is fun. You know, I mean, I'm a big kit support. Like I, I have a few different kits that I like and, you know, some on my wish list. And eventually I could see myself owning a good solid dozen kits that I love. But I just think it's a fun way to, you know, be a soccer fan is just like get different kits that you like and that speak to you. So it's been a fun process. No, it's so fun. I mean, I feel like my wish list grows like every single day, right? Like I, 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 I always like go like me and my girlfriend will like talk about online shopping and I'll, I'll have to get some stuff. And I always just end up wanting to buy jerseys. And she's like, your whole wardrobe cannot be jersey. And I'm like, <laughs> well, why not? They're so fun to, you know, it, it feels like you're representing something. It feels like a little piece of your identity and you're showing that you like soccer. And then um, I think, I think the whole design of it is great. I, I can imagine how fun it would be to design something like that because you always think about in your head, like what your favorite designs are. You think you have it all mapped out of like the coolest version. Um, I, th I think that sounds awesome to touch on what you said earlier as well. I mean, having Rubens as a hub and like a clubhouse, like you said, is such a is such a good integration with you guys. I personally am also a huge fan. I think most people in Ballard are, um, maybe most people in Seattle, full stop. Um, so that seems like a great partnership. It seems like very mutually beneficial. Seems like a cool place to go watch games. I think streaming the games there is a great, great idea. Um, so yeah, all around kit sponsorship, everything is has my two thumbs up. I think it's great. Thanks, man. I no, appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Um, well, I don't have any more questions for you. I think this is probably going to be the end of the pod. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this episode of the Meat Pies podcast. You can find us everywhere you get your podcasts, YouTube as well, if you like the visual content. Um, so if you like this episode, make sure to stay tuned for more. Sam, thank you so much again for coming on, sharing your thoughts about Ballard FC. Any final plug you want to give towards the, towards the coming season? final plug uh no just if you if you live in seattle and you want to come catch a game catch a game i would say if you live somewhere else you're listening to this from somewhere else go find your local grassroots club or whatever and catch a game there because there's some amazing community clubs all across the country and so let's support our small clubs um support our small businesses and yeah thanks thanks for uh, having me on the podcast yeah of course it was our pleasure um up the Ballard FC, I guess. Up the bridges. Someone up came up with that. Up the bridges. That's, That's huge. Someone put that on Twitter, and we just are like, yes, we're using that. Let's roll with it. It's perfect. So up the bridges. That's beautiful. Up the bridges, everyone. Thanks again, yeah. Sam. Thanks.